Hi there. I've noticed a few posts that people have been having trouble with unzipping files that they don't downloaded from the internet and getting them transferred to their flash drive to be used on their machine. I thought I'd do this quick little video tutorial on how to do that to help some of you out. I'm using Windows 7 and when I download my things from the internet I save them all into a folder by themselves and I put it right on my desktop so it's easy to find. Mine are here in this new embroidery files folder. I'm going, I've downloaded some and I'm going to double click this and you'll see that I have three folders in here. These are all um, designs that I have recently downloaded. You'll notice that the, there's a manila folder looking icon here and it has a little zipper. That indicates that this is a zipped file. These do need to be extracted or unzipped, same thing, before they can be used. The reason I have these three on here to show you is they're a little bit different. If you double click on this one, you'll notice that there are just individual files here. This one at the top is called elephant.pes is the actual stitch file. This is what your machine uses to create the pattern. This one right here is just a picture of it. I like to have a little record, visual record of what I've got. And then down here is a text file which has things like the copyright and all of that good stuff. Sometimes that's the um, color chart. The one that you, only one you're interested in right here for your machine is the one that says dot PES after it. If you're using a brother machine, you want PES. DST will also work, but most of them are PES. I'm going to go back here to my other screen and the reason I have some of these on here I wanted to show you is this one's a little different. This one I double clicked it and now it has another folder. If I double click that then you'll see there's a whole bunch of .pes files. It's just the way that they were packaged in, in the zip program. I'm going to go back and I'm going to go back again and this one is a little different yet. Yeah, there's another folder and then there's more folders and you'll notice that these all have different file types. The only one that we're going to be interested for this is going to be the PES. You could delete all of these other ones once you have extracted them and just keep P the PES folder and then that has the photo and then their terms of use and copyright and all that good stuff. So I just wanted to show you that sometimes there's more than just one folder involved and you do need to go all the way and then here's another one. This, this is all separated by size. There's the files. These are what you want to put onto your flash drive to put into your computer, into your machine. So I'm going to back out here, go back to here, and just for the sake of expediency and, and ease, I'm going to just extract the elephant.pes file. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to actually double click it, sorry. And this is the same thing you saw before. Now at the top, you see this little command up here that says extract all files. You want to click this and you'll get a window. I always have this little check box right here marked because I want it to bring up a window showing the files once they're extracted. You can move these files, tell it to put these files wherever you want to. Um, be, I would suggest being consistent just for the sake of being able to find them. We're going to let it do it, let it put those files where it wants to, which is going to be right in, right inside the zip file, I believe. No, it, no, I'm sorry. It will be in the embroidery, new embroidery files folder. So I'm going to extract the button down here. I just single click that. Now these are all extracted. You'll see that this is a second window. The other one's behind it. And there's no longer this extract files command. These are now extracted and ready for use. So I'm just going to put that over the top of there so you can't see it so it doesn't get confusing. The only one that we're interested, I'm, I'm going to plan on stitching this one, so the only one I'm interested in putting on the flash drive is this one right here. I'm going to right click it and you're going to get this window that says copy. I'm going to single click, single left click copy and doesn't look like it's done anything but it has. 
I'm going to go over here and I'm going to, this is my flash drive which I already have in my laptop. I'm going to right, I'm sorry, left click it, single click and you'll see that I don't have anything on my flash drive and I would recommend that. You don't want to have a whole bunch of extra stuff on there because the machine will have a hard time differentiating what it's supposed to be looking for. So, I'm going to come over to this blank area and I'm going to single right click. And I'm going to get that same menu back, but now you'll see that paste is available. I'm going to click paste and there it is. Now this file is still on your laptop, but it's also on your flash drive. It's almost like taking a piece of paper to a Xerox machine and making a copy. So now you have two copies. This, this one you'll use to put on your machine in order to stitch it. So now that I have this on my flash drive and I want to go stitch it, now I can remove this flash drive from my laptop and take it to my machine. You'll see right here that there's a really funny looking little icon that looks like a little pitchfork with little dots on it. This is a symbol that you're going to want to remember what it looks like and you can always glance over there because it's going to be on your screen in a minute. This is the slot where your flash drive goes. You just simply insert it. It goes in very easily. If it does not go in easily, you've probably got it reversed. I'm trying to put it in there. You don't want to force it. If it doesn't go, flip it over. Put it in very easily and then you're going to turn on the machine. And then we're going to go over to the screen. Some of, some of you may have a welcome screen that says brother across it and then you have to touch the screen to get past that so go ahead and do that. And I've bypassed that, I've taken that so it doesn't come up. And I'm going to press OK. My carriage will move. And now on the bottom row here you're going to see that same little funny icon that looks like the pitchfork with the dots. This is the button that is going to read what is on your flash drive. So you press this and it's reading it and there's my elephant. Now I, if I had more on here there will be more designs listed up here and you'll see one here and then there'll, you'll be able to use these buttons here to navigate through them. You find the one you want in this case I want the elephant so I'm going to press that so it's dark and it's still not in the machine yet. Up at the top you're going to see a little pocket with an arrow on it. This is what sends that design into the memory of the machine. So you need to press that and now that design is in the machine and ready to stitch. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Uh, I would recommend that you have a dedicated flash drive for your embroidery machine so you're not using it for your photos and your, um, your letters and all that good stuff. Usually about 2 gigabytes or smaller is fine. They're not very expensive so it's a good idea to have one that's just for your machine so you don't have your husband's information on there and, thing, and him deleting your files and all that good stuff. Um, you also do need to make sure that all of your designs are smaller than the maximum stitch area. For the PE770, the maximum stitch area is 5 by 7. If it's even just a teeny tiny smidge bigger than that, they will not show on the screen. So if you know you've got them on your flash drive and they're not showing, check the size to see what size it is. Um, also remember to only put a couple of designs on your flash drive at a time so that it's not difficult to tell what they are. Very detailed designs are very difficult sometimes to tell what they are and how they're oriented on your machine. So having just a couple makes it a lot easier for you to tell what they are so you get the correct design when you go to stitch. And I think that's about it. I hope this has been helpful to everybody. Thank you and have a great day.